Well guys, uh, welcome to another Manston Air video and this time we're talking about the Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons linker tool available on flightsim.to. Before I get started, you're going to need to know where your community folder is. Now, I'm not going to cover how to find that community folder in this video, but I will leave a link in the description of this video um, about how you might find it. It will depend on whether you've got the Microsoft uh, store version of the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator or indeed the Steam version of Microsoft Flight Simulator and um, you may be able to move that community folder somewhere a bit more useful but again that's outside the scope of this video In this video I'm talking about the Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons linker tool. Now the community folder itself was a fantastic idea by Microsoft as I mentioned in the previous video to have all the add-ons in a single location great where it falls down though is the ability to administer that tool and the ability to interact with the community folder and get everything sorted into for example aircraft liveries sceneries and tools and other add-ons that you might want to sub categorize um, to make things easier because all the uh, all the uh, developers of the add-ons for Microsoft Launch Simulator have a different naming structure for their add-ons. It's not even easy to work out what's what by the names of the of the add-ons. So where this where this Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons linker comes in handy is is to be able to create a structure. Not only that does it means also that you're able to move the add-ons to different locations. The add-ons don't need to be in the uh, in the uh, community folder. In fact, it's probably better that they're not. So I'll quickly show you the software. When you first bring it up, it'll come up with this options page. The first thing you'll need to do is actually fill in this Microsoft Flight Simulator community folder location. Mine is in my E drive. I've made it quite simple to begin with, but yours may well be in a different location. It probably will be. So it needs to know where that community folder is. Then you're going to add add-on folders here and they might be in different drives and uh, the way I've set it up this is this is not uh, an instruction that you must do it this way it's just an idea there's many ways to skin this cat um, is I've got four drives on my computer I've got a really really fast NVMe uh, Gen 4 SSD as my C drive I've got pretty fast NVMe SSD as my D drive uh, I've got a slightly slower uh, four terabyte uh, SATA drive as my e-drive and uh, again uh, the same SATA SSD but only one terabyte drive as, as my F drive. Um, so the way I've done it is I've made four uh, add-on pools and the reason I've done that is, is twofold. Um, I've decided that I would like to make the most of my investment in my computer. I'd like to be able to use that C drive, that really fast storage, but I don't want to fill it up completely. And that storage comes at a premium. And so I can't afford to have all my add-ons on my C drive. Um, but I am gonna put the add-ons that I put the most importance on, on that C drive. And that, for example, for me is the Manston scenery and the PMDG aircraft and the Phoenix aircraft. Um, whereas some of my other add-ons, such as scenery for abroad or elsewhere, might want to end up on different drives, depending on the priority that I will give it and how often I might use those add-ons. And that's why I've split it into four different drives. On top of that, um, by splitting the add-ons into different drives, you're actually giving yourself more bandwidth because, for example, my operating system is running off my C drive my flight simulator might be operating with my D drive and the add-ons are being read from different locations of different drives to give each drive its absolute best possibility of fulfilling its maximum read speed. So you give yourself a bigger bandwidth by splitting your add-ons across different drives. Uh, in reality the difference between for example uh, a SATA SSD and a Gen 4 SSD numerically is quite a lot in reality, in terms of loading times, you're probably not going to notice it. But, f you know, you always like to get the most. So, so use what you have to the best of your ability. So once you've filled in where you want your add-ons folders to be, and again, you can do this in an entirely different way, but this is just the way I've done it. Then you're going to click OK. And then you're going to be met with the main Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons linker tool menu. And on the right-hand side, we start 
to the right hand side today just to speak about what this represents is everything that the simulator is seeing within the community folder. So if you haven't filled in the other folders, you will have all your add-ons already in the community folder and it should all be green on the right hand side. But they will actually be in the community folder and what you'll need to do is actually fish them out and put them into the new locations that you want to be symbolically linked and represented in the community folder. I've already done that and you can see that the community folder, these add-ons on the right hand side, are symbolically linked to the community folder and that's what the simulator still sees is there. And if I scroll down I see that this is pretty much everything that's there. Now if I quickly show you how I've set up on the left hand side these are my folders where my add-ons actually exist. So this is my C drive and the pool one. As I say, I've got my Phoenix A320, my PMDG 737 stuff there. I've also got the PMDG nav data uh, that I've symbolically linked. There's one location. I made another video about that the other day. That needs to be on the same drive as the PMDG aircraft. Um, but it is not an add-on in and of, its, of itself. Um, and I've got my Manston scenery. And I've got one Manston livery there because it's Manston Air. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute, but you'll see that this one here, the JD Airport EGMH Manston, is red and it's not ticked. That's because I've disabled it. Um, I will come back to that. And then on my D drive, I've got uh, some REX stuff because that's actually going to be applying to most default airports. Um, all the scenery to do with Kent and the Southeast and some of the UK. And then on my E drive, I've got uh, a bunch of aircraft, um, some more liveries, and the majority of my scenery is on my E drive because that's a four terabyte drive. I've got plenty of space to spare on that one. And then my F drive, I've just basically got other is mo majority of what I've got in there, and it's tools such as uh, the traffic add-on that I mentioned at the start of this video, and for example, um, stuff to do with tools that you might use. I I, I don't know um, GSX or uh, uh, FS Realistic or uh, other other add-ons that you might want to interact with that just dip in and out of the sim. So that's how I've set up mine and uh, they're all being replicated and symbolically linked into the community folder. Now uh, I quickly show you um, if I actually go into my go into my community folder this is my community folder here you'll see that all these add-ons are actually have like a, a shortcut emblem on them or logo on them and that's to signify that they are symbolically linked folders they, they're not actually where they say they are um, I'll show you for example the Phoenix A320 uh, where is it gone Phoenix aircraft A320 it's right here okay it says it's on my E drive it's in the community folder Phoenix aircraft A320 it's not actually there it thinks it's there but it's not where it actually is is in my C drive where I put it. So I go to my add-ons pool one aircraft Phoenix A320. This is a copy of this and I will prove it to you now. I'll just quickly make a text document and you see it instantly arrived in the E drive. It's exactly the same file. I'll delete it again from here. It's instantly gone. So what this is seeing is the C drive, but it's saying it's the E drive. And for the purposes of the simulator, it might as well be in the E drive. But I'm getting all the benefit of the speed of the C drive, but it thinks it's on the E drive. And that's, that's the key here. Um, so that's just to show you how the, how the symbolic linked folders actually work behind the scenes. Now, the other benefit of this software, Microsoft Flight Simulator Add-ons Linker, is that you can enable and disable add-ons at a click of a button and you're not actually deleting and uh, you're not deleting the files all you're doing is deleting the symbolic link you're disconnecting that symbolic link so for example I've disabled this JD Airport EGMH Manston because it doesn't play well with the other two Manston sceneries that I've got installed there um, and all you need to do if I wanted to re-enable it again is tick it I can't do it at the moment because the simulator is running so I won't click yes to this but if I did, it would turn green and it would appear in the community folder again. But as soon as I've disabled it again and untick this, it'll turn red 
and it will disappear from the community folder, but it will remain in its place on my C drive where it belongs. And one of the nice things about this is you're not having to delete files, so you're not losing anything. All you're doing is disabling it from being seen by the simulator. And you might want to do this, for example, if you do have conflicts with different sceneries or aircraft, or if you do want to test whether a particular add-on might be crashing your system. Sometimes it can take a long time to, to copy a lot of small files, as a lot of these add-ons do have a lot of small files across drives, and reinstall things and delete them and so on. But to simply remove a, a symbolic link is instant. It's a fantastic way to turn something on and off. And another reason you might want to do it is, let's say we get five years down the road, as we did with P3D, and we've got thousands of add-ons, and suddenly the simulator just takes forever to load. You might want to only enable the add-ons that you want to use for that particular flight, and disable everything else. That might improve the loading speed of the sim. And it would be so quick and easy to do, because all you do is tick what you need. And you're not having to uninstall and reinstall things all the time. So I think this is a really useful tool, just generally for um, for using different drives so you can make the most of your storage on your computer, for dividing add-ons into separate categories like aircraft, liveries, scenery, and so on, but also for administering your add-ons and turning them on and off and disabling and enabling them. I think overall it's a must-have tool. Um, and that's really just one I wanted to show you. It. I think I think it's a great tool. It's it's a simple tool. It's a great tool, and I really recommend it. So once again, I'll leave the description, the link in the description for flightsim.to for the MSFS add-ons linker, and I'll also leave a link to a guide of how to find your community folder. That's it for now, folks. I'll speak to you very soon. Cheers. Bye bye.